Is it right? No, no, no. Why is it there? Okay. Then down slowly. Mm -hmm. We're on. It's on. Well done, mate. It's on. You might as well just pull that seal yeah, off the bottom. Off. Yeah. Just, I'm up. I'm good. just yank it off, mate. There we go. Happy days. Good morning, Billy. Good morning, Ryan. So, I finally decided what I'm going to do with the convent. Uh huh. Would you like to know? Yeah. Um, so we're going to renovate it sympathetically. Um, do I knew stuff. That. Do stuff like the kitchen, the big rooms, turn them into really nice, you know, swanky interiors and things like that. Do the bedrooms, do the suites, and um, that's it. <laughs> So, okay, the idea behind it, possibly, sort of a luxury home, okay, but it lends itself to a business, say like um, conferences, possibly a hotel at some point, I don't know, but if we renovate it, sort of with those ideas in mind, it creates a more valuable property because it can be used as such things in the future. Do you know what I mean? Uh -huh. I mean, I'm not gonna live here, uh -huh. But, you know, it could be used as something because it's got the facilities, as I've mentioned. So nice bedrooms, big kitchen, places to sit, you know, things like that. So, yeah, I think that's the idea behind this renovation. What do you think? Tell me what you think. Very good. Very good. Uh-huh. Okay. Yes. Well, let's crack on then. Crack on. <laughs> Morning, Ryan. I can see you're painting again today, Rick. Yes, well, uh, yesterday we managed to get the six doors all painted, furniture back on and all hung back on place. Today we're doing the, uh, the woodwork in the hallway, so that should finish the doors off and make them uh, stand out. Do you not get tired of all this painting, Rick? No, it's very therapeutic. Yeah, it's, uh, it's good for you. And it's easy work, really. Good man. It's got a Take your time and not get any drips. That's the main thing. All right, I'll let you carry on, Rick. I'll see you in a little bit. Okay, thank you. The sink is in, the tap is on. I just need to pop to Bricko when it opens at 2 p.m. and grab a few things just so I can sort out the plumbing and a few things for the tap itself. But yeah, it looks amazing. I can't wait to turn the water on later when it's all installed. It was quite difficult to cut the sink in, I must admit, because I had one centimetre of allowance around the entire perimeter, and if I went over that, well, there would be a gap. But I managed it, it's fine. It's good. Yeah, I'm really happy with it. I think this rubber seal goes there, and then this is the overflow. Yes, that makes sense to me. Ok, 
okay, slight issue. <laughs> Essentially it needs to be sort of level with it, but slightly higher. Hey Rick. Hey mate. What are you doing up there? Well, I thought I'd give you windows a look up here today. Wow. Because we've managed to get all the doors done. We've got all the door frames done. So now we've uh, just got to get the windows done in your, your office, is it? It's going to be your office? My future office. Your future office, so these are going to take a couple of coats. Uh -huh. um, I never do them too neat around the windows because we've got a special tool that we use to uh, scratch the paint off. So just slap it on, let it dry, and do a second coat. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Rick. You're very right. welcome, mate. Crack usual. on. Looking beautiful. It's a lovely day out there, by the way, isn't it? Is, it is, it's lovely. I've uh, just got to make sure I keep one window shut. Yeah. So I don't fall out. Best two. <laughs> <laughs> You're irreplaceable, Rick, so please don't oh, fall. The wolf pack's always irreplaceable, isn't it? Without one, we don't work. That's it. All right, then. I'll catch you in a bit. All right, thanks a lot, mate. We've been to Brico, we've come back, and look at this. What do you think of this spectacular plumbing work? Um, this is a new trap that I got in Brico. The hot and cold water is also connected to the tap. I'm just waiting for the glue to dry on these pipes and then we can test the plumbing and hopefully it doesn't leak. This is a very tall kitchen. <laughs> no, so I'm gonna test the plumbing now. Come on, let's see if it works. Okay, fab, fab, let's keep trying, I've about done myself I think, there's not a single leak. Billy, while we're on the subject of water in France, uh, how safe is tap water in France to consume? Very safe. Yes? Well, it all depends where you live, but yeah, no, they... They look after their water in France. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. They treat it through special plants and all sorts of things, yeah. But yeah, this isn't leaking. The hot water works where the hot is, and the cold works where the cold is. And that was by sheer luck, I didn't know which way the pipes went round. <laughs> wow. There's not a single leak. I'm very, very happy with that. So I've spent most of the day playing around with the plumbing in the sink and I was hoping to get all the grout done today. I've chose an anthracite colour which is like a dark grey so it should match the units. So I'm currently in the kitchen and Ryan is forcing me to elaborate on my plan for this project because I did mention at the start of this video that I've got a slight idea now. So I'm in the kitchen um, and it's a big kitchen but I think we should make it bigger, don't you? And there's a wall right in front of me, and it's about that thin. It's not weight bearing. And there are two pointless rooms off the kitchen and a small hallway. But I think if we took that wall down, this kitchen would be probably the same size again. It would be absolutely massive. I think in a kitchen like this, we could go a little bit crazy and make it really, really nice. We could put coving up, we could put chandeliers up. We could put really nice quality tiles on the floor. We could get a big, beautiful range cooker from Le Cornu or something like that. And, you know, really, really nicely made bespoke cabinets. And a kitchen like this would be fantastic, I think. And that would lend itself for possibly people coming here to learn how to cook, or it could be used sort of as a catering kitchen, or it could just be enjoyed by anyone who is currently living here or helping us. So yeah, that is the plan behind the kitchen project at the convent. Now we're in the refectory. Uh, a room like this, which is over 110 square meters, is a very, very large room. This is where all the sisters would have communally ate. Um, a room like this, I'm not sure what we could do with. Maybe a huge, huge lounge. Bring down the full ceiling, get the original height, do something with the panelling. The floor's quite nice, but I don't know. Maybe we could split it into a few rooms. And I don't know, maybe it could lend itself to an entertainment space or possibly um, somewhere where people can just eat. 
maybe like a mini restaurant slash lounge. I don't know. I don't know what to do with it. If you've got an idea, suggest it in the comment section because it would really help me out. Because this room is just too big. Yeah, but it's an interesting project and an interesting idea. So we're at the lift shaft now and I think I'm just gonna disregard the current system and get a quote from a company to come and replace the entire lift for all three floors. And I've seen now that there are modern systems which incorporates the motor in the base of the lift shaft. So it means we could possibly get rid of that thing that's poking out of the roof where the motor is and have something in the bottom and it would still service all three floors. I could bring the motor room down, but then I'd only have two floors, not three floors. Um, but I do want to hide or get rid of that thing that's poking out of the roof, which is part of the lift shaft. So yeah, um, I don't know how much that will cost. It will probably be in the upper 50, 60, 70,000 euro price range probably. We'll have to do a few more videos, Ryan, to afford something like that. Uh. <laughs> but yeah, we'll get rid of this. We'll get a new one installed. We'll keep the same lift shaft. Hopefully we can bring the top down and you know, it'll be a great asset for a building like this. And it, you know, it just helps people going up and down the floors if they don't want to walk upstairs, so yeah. A lift is always very important if you want to run a business, I think, in a big building like this with lots of flights. We've got 40 bedrooms to play with and that lends itself to a hotel, especially because there's so much space. But if it was going to be turned into such a thing as like a luxury home, um, these rooms would be invaluable. Let's go and have a look a minute. We're in one of the rooms now, and a room like this is a really good size. But if we extended that way into three or four rooms, you could have a bedroom, a lounge, and a huge ensuite. And that would be really, really nice and really comfortable for anyone who are staying here. I don't think there's a lot of work in rooms like this. Um, studying out rooms like this and plasterboard and insulation, I find that incredibly easy to do. Um, Bathrooms are a little bit more complicated, but if you get them right, they're amazing. So yeah, if we were gonna turn this place into a luxury home, you know, you have quite a lot of bedrooms for all the family, but also any point that, you know, you wanna turn it into multiple usage, you've got all the rooms to use for guests. So if anyone's here for seminars or, I don't know, just for instance, like a murder mystery weekend, or, you know, you've got all this space and all these rooms to accommodate everyone. So it would be fantastic. Spoiler alert everyone, somebody is in the garden metal detecting and digging. Have a look. Hello Mo. Hello. Good luck on your treasure hunt. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you can keep it, yeah. Good luck. He won't find anything. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section about renovating this place into a luxury home which will be used or used in the future for other ideas and other projects. So we're sort of bringing the building back into this century but retaining its architectural and historical features. But then again, in the future, when possibly I'm not here, um, well, I'm not here at the building, not dead, um, it can be used for other things. So yeah, I think it's a really good idea and a really tasteful approach to a possible commercialization of this building. You said he wouldn't find anything. Well, I was wrong, wasn't I? Look what Mo's found. Religious icon, icons, statues, all sorts of things. I'm in shock. Well done, Mo. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to go and see what Mo's actually found at the convent while metal detecting, go to his channel, it's called Just Mo. I'll put a link up in the description or up in the screen there. Click it, subscribe and like, and you'll see, uh, wow, the results of this uh, little That's mini nice. uh, metal detecting adventure. Well done, Mo. Well done, Mo. You're like the modern version of Indiana Jones, right? <laughs> <laughs>